Alright folks and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about graphics cards. Now graphics cards for us gamers are our bread and butter. We build our systems and our PCs around them. They are essentially the heart of our machines. So us as gamers, we love our numbers. We are all into our numerics. We are all for our clock speeds or memory speeds. How much video memory does it have? How much of an overclock can we get on this? Uh, what temperatures do we get? And let's not forget about our beloved frame rate. So, I'm kind of a hands-on guy. When I'm doing videos about tech or different things, like different products, I like to have the product in hand. I don't really like doing videos talking about things. But this essentially was a great opportunity as it is the first card in this series to deal with uh, dual chips or dual cores so to say so power color they are a company that produce amd graphics cards they are the second biggest amd graphics card manufacturer next to sapphire so they have decided to bring out their version of uh, dual 390s aka the r9 390x2 um, basically it's a part of their Devil 13 range. People can look back and see that Devil 13 is a series uh, that wasn't really that popular. They had a limited number and are rare in some cases and they've been making them for a couple of years now. Uh, the last one to come out was the dual chip version of the R9 290X and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the video but basically this graphics card is set to be the most powerful graphics card on the AMD line. Uh, a lot of reasons for that and I'm going to go into it when I show you the technical specs now in a moment. But uh, yeah, let's get cracked into it and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. So looking over at the techpowerup.com article we can see some of the technical specs. We can see that obviously it's a dual Granada core. We can see that there's 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which I said previously, it's gonna be eight gigs per chip. Looking at the clock speeds, we can see that it's gonna be about a thousand megahertz. So in comparison with the HIS R9 300, that really isn't that much. At the most, there's 70 megahertz difference. At the lowest, 20 which is practically nothing. Looking at the memory clock speed, we can see it's going to come in around 1350 megahertz. This is connected via the new speed of 1024 bit, which is the two 512 bit memory buses or memory interfaces as AMD like to call it. As far as aesthetics go on the actual cooling solution to the card, uh, we can see obviously that this is going to be very similar to the R9 290X X2 card that uh, came out before for the Devil 13 range. Uh, the cards look practically the same. We can see it's going to be a pretty fat card, uh, triple slot design by the looks of it. And uh, that all holds true with the uh, previous version, the R9 290X X2 version. Looking at the cooling solution, Specifically, we can see that there's three double blade fans uh, on top of the big aluminium heatsink, which actually spans practically the entire PCB of the card. We're also told that the uh, heat pipes, there's going to be 10 of them, which is exactly the same as the previous iteration of the card. It looks to be, as far as uh, these things go, that the card is going to be like a rebrand. Then again, looking at the 380 specifically, a lot of people said that it was a rebranded card itself. Looking at the article, we can see that the card is going to have LED backlighting that glows a bright red, pulsating on the Devil 13 logo. This is going to look pretty epic in some systems. As far as overclocking and overclocking profiles go, uh, we can see there's going to be a dual BIOS button. Uh, similar to the other Devil 13 cards. This will be good for setting some of the uh, overclocking profiles for when you're playing some taxing games. One thing I really want to touch on about the card that surprised me the most isn't the dimensions of the card due to the fact that obviously it takes three slots 
and that it is a really long and big card and it has a massive heatsink. The main thing that I want to touch on is the fact that the fucking thing has four 8-pin power connectors. Now, looking at the 390 itself in comparison, it has a 6-pin and an 8-pin. And with this having, obviously, two 390 chips, you'd imagine that it would have, you know, two 6-pin and two 8-pin. But having four 8-pin power connectors, this thing is a power-hungry little bastard, I would imagine. As far as TDP envelopes go for the card, there's nothing uh, online at the moment. But I would say you'd need a pretty hefty power supply to run this thing. Uh, you got to understand as well that having uh, two 8 pins rather than a 6 pin than an 8 pin. I'd imagine there's going to be a big difference in wattage there overall in the card. Just touching over some of the AMD features that the card has. It supports AMD Liquid VR. GCN architecture, Mantle, Exploit DirectX 12, AMD Crossfire, Virtual Super Resolution, HD 3D technology, frame rate target control, and AMD FreeSync. So just to round off, I wanted to talk about some of the NVIDIA cards and try and make a comparison to this card. Looking at the 980 Ti, a fan favorite for NVIDIA, we can see that the memory bus on it is 384 bit. Uh, this is a good bit different to the 512 bit memory interface that obviously this card's going to have, and don't forget it's going to have two of them. So, looking over at the NVIDIA specification chart, we can see in terms of core clocks that the R9 390X2 is going to be equivalent with the GTX Titan X. Uh, it's actually going to outdo the GTX Titan Black and the GTX Titan. As far as the GTX 980 goes, uh, we're getting a 126 increase in megahertz. Looking at the memory bus in general, the GTX Titan X, Titan Black and Titan are all 384 bit memory buses, same as the 980 Ti. However, looking over at the 980, we can see that the memory bus width is actually going to be half of the R9 390 and a quarter of the R9 390 X2. So just to round up on the card in general and where I think it stands in the market, looking at the visual aesthetics of the card and the fact that it actually is rare and there is only a certain amount made, I could imagine this is going to be a pretty penny indeed, that it's probably going to be an expensive GPU to buy, uh, not just in the UK, but probably also in the US as well. I would say for people that are looking very high-end performance but want it in a single package, this card probably will be ideal. But then again, we have to see benchmarks and we actually have to see prices to you know, be able to determine this. But uh, that is my view on this. So folks, that's going to wrap up my video on the announcement for the R9 390X2. If you enjoyed the video, please throw a thumbs up down below on it. If you really enjoyed my content, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me out an awful lot. You can follow me anytime on Twitter and Facebook at ForTheBanterNI. If you want to see more tech videos like this, where I'm talking about things, announcements and different things, uh, please fire a comment down in the comments section below so I can get a rough idea of what you know my audience, my subscribers, the people that watch these videos actually want. But until next time my friends, goodbye.